All right, guys. So I want to go over something here with you. I got a customer here with a 2009 Chevy Malibu 2.4 liter. Complaint is lack of power and check engine light on. So it's, you know, sometimes it runs fine, and other times all of a sudden it lacks power. So I mean, 2.4 is a decent running motor. To me, it's a little small for a Malibu, but whatever. So I want to show you something here. Um, OBD2 code readers. Like, I'm sure you've seen the ads for them, uh, you know, especially on Facebook. And they say, oh, you could save so much money, you know, on your next repair bill by using our little scanner gadget. How? How do you save money? If you don't know what you're looking at, what do you do with the, what do you do with the information? <laughs> Who knows? It's just a way for them to sell stuff. I, I actually enjoy it when people show me that. Cause, uh, and they say, oh, but my, my little scanner, it says PO420. I, I need a catalytic converter. Do you really? I, I can honestly tell you, every time I get a catalytic converter, I think 60% of the time, it's not a catalytic converter. So maybe even 75% of the time. It's actually kind of rare that I actually replace a catalytic converter, but they do go bad. But Anyway, what I'm getting at is the protocol that's used to uh, read OBD2. I'll just call it OBD. The... There used to be an OBD-1, but I think it was different between each manufacturer. And pre-OBD-2, you couldn't read misfires. At least I don't know of any manufacturer that made that, made misfire, uh, had the cap capability of reading misfires. So your little handheld reader or whatever, it can only read so much. It can only do so much. And then there again, what do you do with the information? So, okay, you go to AutoZone. Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly's, Napa, wherever, and they read the codes for you, and they give you a little printout. Okay, that is a code reader. It's a little more advanced, not much. Uh, sometimes they will, it'll say, you know, like a P1299. I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't even know if that's a real code. It'll say P1299, manufacturer-specific code. Okay, now you got to look up and find out what does that code actually mean. So... My scanner that I have, I have a Snap-on Solus scanner. It's you know, it's not a cheap scanner. It's not the most expensive scanner either. You know, this is a very good mechanics scanner. It has pretty good capability to it. I'm getting close to wanting to upgrade this and getting one with a built-in scope. I'm not there yet. I will be soon though. However, my scanner does have capability to do OBD. Let me show you. And I want to show you the difference between the scanner and the OBD. Get ready. All right, so here we go. Here's my car. Now, I've already gone and I've scanned it on both ends because I just wanted to see the difference. So here. Going into it. OBD diagnose. Start communication. Okay, now, number of ECUs detected, two. Now, for power, this only reads powertrain. It doesn't read anything else. OBD only is for powertrain. It doesn't do anything else. So, that first one is probably PCM. Second one is probably TCM. I don't know because I usually don't go this way when I uh, read codes. I do have my own little handheld scanner that I keep in my car just in case. But like I said, I don't rely on it totally. So diagnostic trouble codes. Okay, here we go. You see there's one, two, three, four, five codes. You see all of those? P106, uh, P0106, I mean... Uh, map sensor, barometric pressure sensor, range performance, P107, map, barometric pressure sensor, circuit low. Circuit low um, is an electrical problem. P0171, system 2 lean, bank 1. P0420, CAD efficiency. P0455, EVAP system leak detected. Okay. Now, check this out. This isn't dramatic, but I just want to show you what I'm talking about. 
So I'm going to go back here to previous vehicles because I already, when you go in scanner, you have to load the vehicle in there. You have to, you know, pick the vehicle. Some vehicles like this one, it'll actually, it'll um, uh, identify the vehicle automatically. But since it's already in the system, I'm just going to go here. Vehicle history. There it is. Oh, and I'm Malibu. All right, codes menu, display codes, okay, PO128, engine coolant temperature below threshold, hmm, that wasn't on the other one, so now if you had a little handheld, it wouldn't be there, see this right here, that means I got more than these four codes, I got seven codes, that PO300 wasn't on the other list, it's fire detected. So I just I just want you to see this that just because you get your code read from you know your little device or you know you went to even AutoZone or wherever, their stuff may not pick up everything. So you may be only getting part of the picture. And like I said, there's nothing really wrong with having those little handheld readers. I have one myself. Don't rely on them. Don't rely on them at all. I've actually seen them to where it'll give you one particular code, and then you go with a scanner and actually read it. That code's not there. So either it's misreading something, and I've seen it more than once. Nope, I got somebody coming up behind me here. So let me go take this and see what's going on. I'll be right back. All right, so there's a couple of things here. Like the engine misfire detected. I'm not really going to worry about that right now. I am going to worry about the PL128. The coolant temperature, that can have an effect on a lot of things. Now, the PO420 code. Okay, you went and just had your codes read somewhere. You got a PO420. Oh, my God, I need a catalytic converter. Probably needs O2 sensors. Let's do that first. You put an upstream in and a downstream in. If you still have the problem afterwards, then you're going to need a cat. Now, the reason I tell you to put the O2s in first is because if you're putting in a new cat, you're putting in those O2s anyway. You may as well put the O2s in first. You're going to spend the money regardless. And at least if that fixes the problem, you're golden. And I've seen it fix it more than 75% of the time, I'd say. It's very rare that i got to put a cat in for a cat efficiency code. It really is. Um, what else do we have here? Let's take a look. Okay, the ones that I'm going to really concentrate on here... I'm going to concentrate on those map sensor codes. I got a funny feeling that's going to cause the majority of this problem. The PO128 is more than likely a um, bad thermostat. Now, the PO171, the fuel trims, that could be caused by a bad map sensor. If the map sensor is skewed and it's reading incorrectly, or you know, it's it, the computer thinks it's getting the right information when it's not, like because the map sensor is skewed and just and totally throwing it off. You know, the computer may not see it as an issue, but it could create fuel trim issues. Now, fuel trim system lean. Now, that also could lead to the CAT system efficiency problem. The large leak, I'm going to hold off on looking, on it, looking at that to see. Um, who knows? Who knows? I'm just going to hold off. I'm not really too worried about that. Like I said, they're worried about the drivability issue right now. So, that's what we're going to go with. Um... Yeah. So I'm going to get up underneath there and, you know, take a look at the map sensor and go from there. Uh, you know, it could be a mouse under there that chewed through wires. Who knows? So if you get anything out of my videos, hit the like button. If you could, please subscribe. Uh, that's about it. Have a great day. Keep brunching.